the most exciting group. I'm going to say you're going to go for Group C simply because when we were doing the interviews, you mentioned a lot of these teams are very unpredictable. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. I would say that Group C, not only are they unpredictable, they're some of the most aggressive we have. Especially CU Sunan as well as Na'Vi. Both of these teams really like to go hard or just go home. We're going to show you next, of course, day one, we have got some great matches taking place. So this is Group A, day one, of course, there's six games on there. Rafael, which one will you definitely be watching? Well, you're going to watch them all, but which one will you make sure you don't miss? Well, again, let's start with the very first one of the day. A very good matchup where we can see Blacklist International going up against Red Cannons, where again, Red Cannons, they have a lot of potential. I do want to see them do very well in F3. But as of right now, Blacklist International is a very big wall for the hurdle. Gideon, for people who are watching this for the first time, mm -hmm. uh, this might seem like a silly question, but I think a lot of people will be interested to hear your opinion. So, Blacklist International, they have got a gap in between all their games, but for instance, BDL, mm -hmm. they're playing a match after each other. Is that an advantage or a disadvantage in your opinion? Well, look, a lot of teams have different play styles, you know? Not one simple formula works for everybody, everybody has different needs, and the same goes for these teams. Blacklist International, they could be a team that works off a lot emotively, or sometimes they need to, you know, take a break, slow down, and then continue to progress. I think, you know, for that specific question, BDL and Malvinas Gaming, I'm both worried for them because we don't know whether they're momentum-based or do they need that break to succeed. Well, that is day one. Day two, I don't think anyone is going to miss any of these games. Lefel, is it a silly question to ask which game you're going to look forward to the most? It's Onik versus Onik, right? Well, Onik versus... I have two games that I want to watch, but yes, Onik versus Onik. I'm pretty sure not just me, not just give everyone else as well. We want to see how the Filipino brand as well as the Indonesian brand they're going to play with each other. But another shout out I do want to give is on the Philippines against Team Toda, where Toda again, they play a very uncharacteristic style because sometimes their draft is a little bit all, all over the place. I want to see how they go up against on the Philippines. Gideon, which, which game do you think will be over the quickest? So many strong teams in this. If you had to predict one game that would be over the fastest, which one would you go for? Honestly, I think most people would, would say like, oh, you know, it's going to be an Onyx, an Onyx versus VK. No, I think the Onyx versus Onyx game will yep. actually be the fastest. Oh, because right. I feel that once a team gets even the slightest advantage, it's a game over already. It's the first person who makes the mistake. Oh, interesting theory there. We shall see. That is day two. Some absolutely fantastic matches on. Day three. Still got some fantastic ones. This is the unpredictable mentioned earlier so many interesting matches yeah. Lafell which one do you think is is the highlight for that group okay so a lot of people are interested in small schemes but I want to see the very last game over there see you soon going up against BTK where both of these teams they like to play aggressive. Again, BTK looks so strong in NA, and see you soon has been getting a lot of games from MPL teams. So I think BTK and see you soon. That's the last match of the day. That is the match that I want to see. So Gideon, a lot of people might say this looks like the easiest group so far. Would you agree or disagree with that statement? Honestly, unless you are an EVOS SG fan, I would totally agree that, you know, EVOS SG has the highest chance of getting into the upper brackets without too much unless they really drop the ball. I'm so excited because this is one of those situations where it's whether you want ice versus fire in the EVOS versus SYS matchup or the fire versus fire matchup, which is SYS up against Navi. And very quickly, both of you, which game are you looking forward to the most from this group? See you soon versus Navi. Again, see you soon, DK. Okay, well, some fantastic matches there. Day four, the final one, this is group D. And to be honest with you, every single day, there, there's at least one game that's gonna be fantastic. SMG versus RRQ right there. Which, which match do you think has the biggest chance of any team causing an upset? Okay, so personally for me, I do believe that SMG going up against RSG, the third match of the day, there is a possible upset because again, SMG are the champions, 
RSG, they're not the champions of their own region, but again, I feel like RSG could actually take the game off of SMG because even they said during their, their interview where they're most afraid of themselves not being able to catch up with the meta, not being able to catch up with Singapore. Gideon, this group here, Group D, GX, right. GX squad, we spoke to them earlier. What do you think their chances are of getting out of this group looking at those matches? Look, the most logical reasoning that we can see here is that since we don't have a lot of information off of GX, it's likely that most people will assume that they wouldn't be able to take a game from either RSG, RQ, or even SMG. But that's the big problem here. I think that GX has what it takes to really turn things around. And I think their best chances, if they can take a game off of RRQ, that in itself is a huge, huge statement. Well, guys, it's been an amazing draw.